Hitekujo is a Japanese word for chit chat and is the name of a presentation format created in Japan in 2003 by Astrid Klein and Mark Dyson, two architects looking for a way people could share their work quickly and simply in public. Since then, the idea has spread to over 700 cities around the world. At every Pecha Kucha night, creative thinkers come together and share their ideas with only 20 images shown for 20 seconds each. Pachakucha, a fast fun format. Find a location, join the conversation. Our next speaker is originally from Rochester, New York, earned a master's in college student personnel from Western Illinois University, and is currently a higher education PhD candidate at Boston College and the Dean of Students at Fashion Institute of Technology. In addition to the student affairs field, he is passionate about coffee. Who here is also passionate about coffee? Yes. Travel, social media, and long walks on the Tampa River walk at dusk. He is an expert in the emerging field of iPhonography, which sounds naughty, but I'm told doesn't have to be. And he's here to tell us about an improbable love affair. Please welcome to the stage, Paul Gordon Brown. All right, I get to talk about what I love today. Um, I get to talk about the love of my life, the wind beneath my wings, if you will. And I think there's a few lessons that you can take from this love affair that I've had. You see, it was almost two years ago to this day that I felt a little bit lost. How many of you have felt lost before? Yeah? I felt lost because two years ago it was kind of like Bridget Jones' diary, the opening scene where she's on the couch and there's Kleenex everywhere, and I didn't know what to do, and I felt depressed. And so my way out of this was to begin to travel. And when I began to travel, I didn't just travel a little bit. If you know me, I traveled a lot. In two years, I have racked up 131 flights, 140,000 miles, traveled around the world the equivalent of six times. And it was through this travel that I met the love of my life, the person that puts wing beneath my wings. And the love of my life, as some of you may know, is an airline. <laughs> you see, it's complicated, my relationship with JetBlue. And I know what you're thinking. It seems really strange, like of, of all the loves of your life and an airline, that's not usually the first industry people think of when they think about who to fall in love with, right? Usually, I know you all have painful experiences from flying. But my relationship with JetBlue began with a single tweet. You see, I was leaving from Boston, and it was the end of the day, and I was tired, and I wanted Starbucks and get on the plane and just relax. But I didn't realize I was leaving from this small gate area that basically has pre-wrapped sandwiches and maybe some stale candy. And so what do you do when you don't know what to do? You tweet about it. <laughs> and tweet I did, I tweeted JetBlue and said, hey, does my frequent flyer status come with Starbucks delivery? And they were cute, they responded, no. But then I got on the plane, and as you can see maybe where this story is going, I heard something over the loudspeaker. Paul Brown, can you press that flight attendant button? And sure enough, there was my venti mocha. Hand-delivered on the plane to me with mints, just for my breath, just in case. And so it was through this, this is how my relationship began with JetBlue. And it taught me to create surprises. They create surprises all the time. And it reminded me that I want to create surprises for other people. You see, there's this man named Ray who is now retired but was the former worker at Dallas-Fort Worth Airport. And I met Ray through Twitter, he'd follow my tweets, and I happened to be flying through Dallas one day. And what was waiting for me on the plane but a poster all signed by the Dallas-Fort Worth crew with all my pictures pulled from Instagram from my trip to Dallas waiting for me on the plane. And so when you meet some of these folks, when you meet people in other jobs that love what they do, it's infectious. It reminds you about how you should love what you do and love your job every day. And if you don't, then maybe you need to rethink something. Because when I interact with JetBlue and others interact with JetBlue, it's not just me, you might get somewhat unusual responses. I had emailed them one time because I had a customer service issue. And this is the response I got. It says, how the heck are you? <laughs> it's sure nice to hear from you again. 
not the common customer service response, right? But for me, it was great. I was like, this is awesome. I love this. Because the folks at JetBlue and I, we have a lot of fun together. They become like my invisible travel companion. So much so that last summer, you might remember, the ice bucket challenge was pretty popular and going viral around the internet. So I decided, well, let's get JetBlue in on this, right? So I virtual ice bucket challenged them, and they accepted. <laughs> Sometimes they help me pack for my trips. I say, you know, the, the linen or the paisley, what are we going for here? Of course, they pick paisley. <laughs> they help me out. They're my buddies. Hashtag fashion forward. <laughs> and so they've also reminded me to be kind. Be kind to others. Be kind in the actions that you have, even if they're just for a very small period of time. And last Valentine's Day, I thought, well, let's be kind to Jeff Liu. So what do you do on Valentine's Day to your love? You send them a Valentine. And so we all know that hand-created Valentines are the best kind. Even more speed, even more space, you always get me to the right place. The customers are fed with chips that are blue. I always enjoy flying with you. And so JetBlue returned the favor. You see, they have this program called Badges. When you fly to Tampa, you unlock the Tampa badge, just like a game. And so for me, they unlock the PB&J badge. <laughs> the PB&J badge. I am the only and will only be the ever holder of the PB&J badge. Because JetBlue and I go together like Paul Brown and JetBlue. And that's how I met my friends. My friends that I've actually never met. My friends that I know are probably in Salt Lake City right now <clears throat> and are probably wondering why y'all are gonna tweet them in about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> and what it taught me about social media and the power of making friends and connections really is that you don't need to meet someone to be connected to them. I've never met these people and yet I'm connected to them. And they taught me a lot of life lessons along, around, along the way. They've, we already tweeted on the way down here to Tampa, so just so you know. <laughs> and so kind of the lessons I want you to take away from my relationship with JetBlue are reminders to be kind to others, to love what you do, to make friends, have fun, create surprises, because I promise you if you do these things, you get it back 30-fold. And so the next time you're in a situation when you're frustrated, I want you to ask yourself a simple question. And that question is, in this situation, what would JetBlue do? <laughs> now, that is my 20th slide, but I tried to sneak a 21st in, which I did. <clears throat> and, oh, it doesn't even come up. The slide stop must stop at 20. But what I want you to do is I want you to take out your phones, I want you to fire up Twitter, I want you to write, at JetBlue, and I want you to send the person on the other side of that computer just a little bit of love, maybe a fun picture, whatever you want, but you're gonna make someone's day right now that you will have never met and will give them a great surprise. Thank you. Don't stop